All right, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to The Butcher's Circus. Today, we are going to be watching a match between myself and Raptoff, a champion one opponent that is playing what I believe is the old gold by 135 Chainman, so quite an interesting take on the old gold as well, and not something that we're going to have an easy time against, because we are playing a leper comp that doesn't have any extra accuracy and doesn't have any way of dealing with the regen. And also, you know, Leper kind of struggles against a lot of protection, so the double pit fighter's helm frontline here is uh, not going to be too easy to deal with. But to prevent that regen from coming through, we're going to start off with a come hither that fails an 88% chance of landing. So, wonderful start here for us, because not only did we go second, which we, we never want to happen, or almost never want that to happen, we also <laughs> miss the 88% chance come hither on the Antiquarian. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep calm and we're gonna keep on playing because that hound's heavy didn't hurt us all that much considering the lack of um, the lack of accuracy buffs and we're just gonna go for revenge which is really gonna help this sniper do way more damage uh, throughout the match and also help him land his hits. So there's going to be a slam by that abomination since we do have the exotic snuff. It was very unlikely for that. Um, for that push to actually go through. It was a 10% chance, so I would have been <laughs> way more annoyed at that than the come hither failing, because come hither failing was definitely annoying, but that would be that would be even worse. So we're gonna drop a nice stunning blow on that abomination, not confirmed to actually either hit or stun, both extremely likely though, and now we're just gonna drop a sniper shot. So 13 to 22 damage, we get a, a fairly high roll there for 19, and now we have a lot of ways of hitting that abomination, and we're gonna try going for some of them. So that's gonna be an immediate bellow, which is um, gonna start really reducing our damage, and uh, the stress is also adding up slowly but surely, just purely based on the amount of uh, the amount of pressure that's being put out. So we go first with the sniper. I was hoping that I would do enough damage with the hue because of the exotic snuff buff. You get plus 10% damage when you act first. So I was hoping that hue would give me enough damage. Sadly, it didn't. And uh, I had to go for an immediate shot, but that's still okay because there was no regen applied yet. So I get to just drop a finish him here. So maybe a big misplay by my opponent not to go regen round one with an antiquarian, especially considering the come hither failed, because it would have allowed him to save uh, this abomination from this store just by clicking him. And that would have been a free action essentially. But the crits, the crits, oh my goodness, the crits hurt. And my stress is already like racking up really, really quickly. So with this Crusader here, I do have the Glorious Banner, which means I can use Inspiring Cry on someone, remove all their horror, give them a Virtue chance, and also clear a bunch of stress. So this is going to be really, really useful this match because pretty much half of my characters, or maybe even all of my characters, are going to have a Virtue chance against the stress team. So that's going to be really nice. And now I get to just drop a Sniper Shot with this Arbalest, and even without a Mark, and with the Bellow Devos, and with the 20 Prot on the Houndmaster, I can pretty much ignore the prod and I can still hit him for a lot. And once you get this Houndmaster out of here, it's all about dealing with the Antiquarian, and after that we should be a-okay. But that's going to be easier said than done, because now we need to actually deal with Houndmaster, and he still has little clones with regen, and we don't have a lot of reach into position 3, and we also don't have a finale as you would have with uh, the Helicopter or something. So I decided to just go first with this leopard. I was thinking of clearing the corpse, and in hindsight, maybe it would have been a good idea because it would have allowed me to have better reach onto the Houndmaster, but I just thought, well, if I put on some pressure on this man arms, so that's going to be great too. And uh, I'll, I'll make use of that damage now that I have it. So my Crusader here is going to go have a Virtue check, so we have a 30% chance of getting the Virtue. Sadly, we do not get it, and we get potentially the worst affliction of them all, which is Irrational, because Irrational can do just about anything that you don't want it to do. So we're going to drop another Inspiring Cry, this time on the, on the Bounty Hunter. So we're also clearing 24 Horror and we're clearing 33 Stress and giving him a Virtue Chance. So I'm definitely going to have to stick by this decision because other than that, I'll just go for 50-50 stun, which could definitely fail. So we now have a confirmed kill chance if and only if we hit the 85% Sniper Shot. And since we didn't, well, we have to go for finish him now, but finish him doesn't even do enough damage, so I just decided to drop a caltrips in absolute anger right now. Because letting that uh, that Houndmaster just not have any more actions left after a sniper shot, just letting me get a quick kill, would have been pretty much a confirmed victory right there. But since we miss a crucial 85, 
you know, the things are not looking up to, are not looking up for us because the Houndmaster, again, still has Luke Wounds and I still have to hit him, like, at least two more times before I can actually roll for death, though. And my Leper is now gonna go Rational, and the DOT is really ending up and it's gonna start hurting because my backline's almost dropping by now. Rational is gonna be a little bit minus damage, so we roll for 10 this time. Sadly, even with our plus 11% crit chance on the Leper, we have not gotten a single crit, but... Uh, I guess, I guess that's what the Arbalist is here for, kind of just to fill that role. So that's going to be, oh, that's a lot of stress supply. That's what Crimson Hook and Pit Fighter's Helm does. And then the Crusader just does like a bunch of act outs with, um, uh, with that Irrational. So that's going to be an abuse on the Arbalist. Sadly, the Virtue Chance did not work. And the Bounty Hunter is going to go paranoid. So both Virtue Chances were absolute fails. And, uh, well, not all is lost, though, because we didn't manage to prevent a lot of stress from being output. And even though we're getting close to the assault, we're not quite at heart attacks. And that Houndmaster's action is gone already, which means you can just go for a sniper shot and take it from there. I was wondering if I could heal someone and maybe prevent him from dropping to the assault, but considering that the Arbus was taking 10, I would need to roll for a crit heal, and uh, that's just not feasible. So I decided to drop another sniper shot. Once again, the hit chances weren't great, <laughs> especially considering abusive is minus 5 accuracy. But we roll for just enough damage to drop that Houndmaster down to zero, which means that now we should be able to get the kill. We definitely should be able to get the kill. My opponent surprisingly still doesn't drop the Rejuvenating Vapors, but gets an immediate 25% kill on the Arbalist, and gets yet another crit with that Festering Vapors. Keep in mind there hasn't been a single command buff or anything, like they don't even have confirmed hit chances. They have 85 accuracy and 90 accuracy each. And they just hit every single one and get crits left, right, and center. But I'm gonna click the Crusader here. I'm gonna heal that Bounty Hunter just so we keep the Crusader out of the store and so we keep the Bounty Hunter out of the store too. And of course, Paranoid, as we all know, has a chance of moving back. And as Murphy's Law says, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. <laughs> but not the kill on the Hound Monster though, thankfully. So we do get that 50 50. Like, we get a. I think it's a 10% chance of moving back. But then we manage to get a 50 50 on the pull. But that's still not ideal because my, now my Bounty Hunter is going to have to move forward and waste an action like that. Which means that's going to be another turn for that Man of Arms to keep spamming that bellow. So thankfully, we have managed to shave a lot of the Man of Arms HP so far. Uh, that's definitely very, very helpful, and with this chop, it should be just about enough to bring him down to zero. So yeah, unless we miss, we should do enough damage to bring him down. I think I'm, I might decide to be greedy here and go for a hue, but uh, I, I would probably not do enough damage, considering how this match has turned out so far. And there's going to be Festering Vapors right now, and this Festering Vapors is going to start really, really hurting, because uh, not only am I dropping to that store, I'm also getting really close heart attacks, so we're in for a really, really, really close one. This is about as close as it gets because I need to look at the numbers very carefully now to consider what I can actually do. I wish that the Crusader could kind of move back two positions here because that would have prevented me from... Um, that would have allowed me to go finish him on that Man of Arms, but uh, you would just die next round anyway. So we click the Bounty Hunter and just drain out that TOT because I wouldn't have enough to heal to prevent him to drop to that store anyway. And now we heal with the Crusader. And uh, that Antiquarian or the Man of Arms will cause a heart attack, but we won't die at the very least with the Crusader. So the situation is uh, is manageable here. So there's going to be a Bellow before, before that uh, Man of Arms dies. Thankfully, it misses the Bounty Hunter, that Paranoid coming in clutch. And it does cause a heart attack on the Crusader, but he is going to stay alive. And now this uh, this bounty hunter is definitely not in a good position because even if I the thing is even if I go for a finish him right now, all of my characters will die because the leper probably takes two damage considering the revenge debuff, and the bounty hunter is going to be also taking two damage and with the festering vapor stress and also falling to the store, literally every single character is going to die. So I do still decide to go for the Bounty Hunter and go for Finisher because the Crusader might survive the Festering Vapors and that's really what counts. But this Festering Vapors, oh, it's gonna matter. There's plus 10 accuracy now and let's see how it turns out. Thankfully no death blows and thankfully no crits, but it's almost enough stress to kill my Bounty Hunter. A little bit of stress on that act out. Almost enough, almost enough to kill all my characters. I decide to click the Leper here first, just go for Solemnity. So he's alive and well, and as long as the Crusader doesn't have an act out right now, we should be able to win this match because of the Rally to the Fine, but he has an act out, 33% chance of getting an act out on Bounty Hunter, Bounty Hunter dying 
also gave the Crusader more stress, which is once again a 1 in 3, and that's two characters gone just like that. And now it's a 1v1 between an Antiquarian ticking down with Caltrops and my Leper, which is really close to heart attacks again, is really close to dropping to 0 HP, but does still have Solemnity, so I, I have to clear corpses here if I actually want to get the kill. I think that Houndmaster died round 3, or maybe round 4, I can't remember too well. But he definitely died later than he should have, because if you don't remember, we did miss that sniper shot earlier. But we managed to just barely uh, clear that Man of Arms uh, corpse there, and now we can do something with our lepers. So there's going to be a take cover, which is definitely an interesting play, because I can always drop a heal if I want to. But I probably don't want to, but well, you know... I think I'm irrational as well with the Leper. I just decided to drop a heal for the Antiquarian's entire health bar. But at this point, I don't think there's anything I can do because she's even if she doesn't do two damage, uh, which she probably won't, the DOT is going to tick me down to zero and I'm going to drop to this door and have a heart attack, which is going to be a GG for Shepherd Doggy. So you might wonder, what could have I done differently? Well... This was really close and definitely big GG's to, to wrap it off, but I, I was really annoyed and <laughs> I was unbelievably annoyed with this match because I was on a 12 match winning streak with this team and I was very sad to see it come to an end uh, against such disappointing RNG, you know, more dust, more ashes, disappointment is what uh, Ancestor is saying and I will say that myself too, but you can't win every single match wrapped off despite doing some questionable pl questionable plays not using that region more often he still played this about as well as you could play a stress team into a damage team like this and uh i do quite like this matchup because I, I think that most cool matches or most matches that end up coming to this 1v1 at the end are decided in these sorts of matchups between damage and stress and i was happy to get a close match and at least get a really really good ending to my to my win streak and gg to wrap it off for for snatching victory and the 13th match oh the 13th match yeah i guess i was pretty unlucky huh yeah <laughs> well anyway gg to wrap it off once again i hope you enjoyed the video and cheers